Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining this Allen Heath webinar. I'm Nick Beretta, Head of Product at Allen Heath. And in these very challenging times for everyone, um, I'm working from home, as I imagine most of you are. It is a good time, however, to catch up with uh, online training and webinars and live streaming events, and that's exactly what we are trying to do. So AHM64 today, Throughout the webinar, please use the questions pane in your webinar interface to send me any question you might have about the product. I've also uploaded the AHM64 technical data sheet to the handouts session, um, section of the webinar interface, uh, so you can review it during the webinar and again send me any question regarding the technical specs. Now, Alan Heath is not new to the world of installation. We have been designing installation products for over 20 years. Uh, we started with the first digital solutions in 96. That's when our digital team in R&D consisted of two engineers, two software engineers. We now have more than 25. Our IDR and GR matrix processors are still at the core of audio systems in global banks and blue chip headquarters, government facilities, universities, theme parks, and more recently, we have extended our D-Live mixing system into fixed installation, allowing multi-purpose venues to handle everything from background music to a full orchestra performance. But in the last couple of years, we have been busy rethinking the matrix. And what we came up with is the new AHM64. It's a new breed of audio matrix processors for sound management and installation. For applications including audio distribution, conferencing, speaker processing, paging, in a variety of environment. So let's dive into it and have a look at some of the, some of the details. First off, AHM64 has a 64 by 64 processing matrix inside with flexible architecture. More on this very soon. And the ultra low latency 96 kilohertz FPGA technology from Allen Heath. On the front panel, there's no controls, only some status LEDs, including the status of the power supplies, both the uh, mains voltage and the uh, DC 12 volts power supply a ready LED, meaning the unit is ready to pass audio, a sync LED uh, for the clock settings, and uh, our patented chromatic signal meter, which is multi-point peak detection, and it will show you the, um, the signal presence throughout the unit. More interestingly for you, I imagine on the back panel, you'll find 12 by 12 local analog IO on Phoenix connectors, and the S-Link port, which is for audio expansion of up to 128 inputs and outputs. Through our everything AO range of modular, portable or wall mount audio expanders. Now, some of you might be already familiar with the S-Link port from our Avantis or uh, SQ digital mixes. What S-Link does is uh, it's an intelligent port and it will automatically detect what's on the other side of the cable and switch to the appropriate Allen and Heath protocol. It can work at 48 kilohertz or 96 kilohertz at a different channel count as well. There's also an IO port for audio networking options of up to 128 bidirectional channels. A two by two local GPIO interface for your alarm override applications or, or anything else. And if you need more, we will explore some of the options later. Your mains voltage IEC inlet, as well as a DC 12 volts backup power supply connector. So the unit can be used in uh, EVAC or fire alarm systems if you wish to do so. Now, these are the two cards that you can fit to the IO port. One is obviously a Dante option, 64 by 64 channels, switchable sample rate 48 or 96 kilohertz, AES 67, compatible and Dante Domain Manager ready. Another option is a second S-Link port. So if you want to have further IEO expansion options, 
on top of the onboard S-Link, you can choose to fit an S-Link card as well. And this will be supported in version 1.1 of the software. Also available on the top panel, there is what we call a roof hatch, and that's uh, to fit an extra processing expansion module for applications like echo cancelling and more to come. Now let's have a look at the features. I'll keep this brief because in a couple of minutes we'll jump into AHM System Manager and have a look at some of the channel processing a bit more in detail. Now to start with, uh, eight automatic mic mixes, up to eight automatic mic mixes, uh, depending on your configuration, which means that you can essentially handle meetings in multiple meeting rooms at the same time with the same unit, noise compensation across all of the zone outputs, priority ducking, uh, full processing on board on input and output channels. So you have eight band parametric EQ, dynamics, delay on every input and zone, a graphic EQ on top of the PQ for every zone. And you have up to 64 processing output channels. These processing output channels can be configured as mono or stereo zones, or they can be reserved for speaker processing with crossover filters, delay, limiters, PQ and levels for each crossover output. There's also an integrated stereo playback for WAV, MP3 or FLAC files with about three gigabytes, gigabytes available of internal memory, an event scheduler, and the system manager software will be Windows and Mac compatible as well, which is quite unique in the installation market. Now, AHM64 is essentially a fixed format platform. However, we think we strike the, the right balance between the simplicity and set latency of fixed architecture on one side and the flexibility and configurability typically reserved for open architecture platforms on the other side. So once I uh, demonstrate the software, the, the system manager, hopefully you realize that on one side, it's super fast, easy to use, there's no certified training required. Uh, on the other side, it's very flexible and configurable. So without further ado, let me jump into AHM System Manager. This is a beta version of the software, which is still in development and in test. So you'll see that some of the graphic details will need some, uh, some final styling and tweaks. Uh, you can see there's a unit already there, which is discovered on my home network, and I can connect to it. Uh, with a user and password if, if one is set and uh, essentially log into the unit. Okay, so let's start from the channel processing. So this is all my input channels. And you can see it's a horizontal signal flow diagram, which gives you very clear visibility of what is available on the channel and what is switched on, like the gate on the first five channels and what is switched off, like the gate on the other channels. Also, if you position your mouse cursor over any processing block, it will be highlighted, and the audio from that point of the signal path will be sent to your monitoring system that you can patch out to any speaker or headphones. So I can scroll down to all of my 64 channels. On the left, name and color, I can obviously edit that. Then I have all of my local uh, socket patch and preamp information, uh, gain value, train value, pad, phantom power. Uh, then I have the gate, which can be turned into a channel ducker if you wish to do so. For example, for a music background source, if you want to duck it uh, when uh, with a sidechain source, which can be a paging microphone, for example, uh, you can do that. The sidechain, you can select the filter type, you can source it from any source. And you can also see down here the histogram, which we also have in our live mixes. And that gives you an idea of the last 20 seconds of activity of the processing block. Then we have two insert points, A and B, on every input channel. And these can be external insert points, uh, insert uh, processors, or you can pass them to the expansion process, processing expansion module. So, for example, for echo cancelling applications. Parametric Q 
eight bands and you can choose the filter type for each band. Is it a high pass, a low pass, a notch filter, a shelving filter or a classic bell filter? Uh, compression, again, with a sidechain filter and the histogram. Delay of up to uh, 680 milliseconds on every input and output. Then you have the automatic mic mixer. As I said, we have up to eight available. I have two configured here, but I can go up to eight different AMMs. I can choose the mode of the AMM. So we have the classic, uh, de-classic uh, gain sharing algorithm, Dugan style, or you can switch to a number of open microphones array, which will give you some extra options and a bit more sophisticated uh, set of controls to, to use. Uh, I can assign my channels to it and see how much processing you are obviously um, priority you are giving to the to the channels. Then you have your level and mute and your cross point routing, which will only show you the actual zones which are already assigned to this channel in terms of uh, cross points. So it you will not get lost in a sea of 64 possible faders. Of course, you can edit the routing and assign more zones to this channel. But in this case, the microphone wireless that I have open at the moment is only patched to zone meeting and venue, and therefore only those faders will be shown. If I switch to the zones view, it's very similar. Again, I can scroll down and see all of my 64 zones on the left and their names and colors. The first object in the line here is a source selector. And this is a very simple way of selecting a few sources for background music, typically. Uh, so in this case, I have uh, TV, uh, CD, Spotify. And I can set a fade in and fade out time. I can overwrite the name and color so that if I have a controller like a wall plate in, a, in that room, the name will make sense to the person, to the user in the room and not to the uh, system tech. And this will be essentially all automated from external triggers as opposed to set different uh, fader levels and presets in my unit to do it manually. Then I have a choice of priority input for every zone. So this can be like a paging microphone or um, a voice alarm messaging system and I can configure the amount of attenuation I want to give to the other signals to the zone and, of course, the source. An insert point, again, on my zones, eight band parametric EQ, like on the input channels. But on the zones, I also have the choice of either a 30 band graphic EQ or a further eight band of parametric EQ available. So there's plenty of EQ options available for, for all of your outputs. Then I have the dynamics, the delay, noise compensation. This is also available on every zone output. So I can choose the metering point. I can choose my gap metering settings and the control gain settings uh, for noise compensation uh, use. Uh, level control and mute. We have a limiter available on every zone. And then, as I mentioned earlier, there's the speaker processing part of it. So from a single zone, like this stereo main zone 11 and 12 down here, I can actually feed that mix to a two-way, three-way or four-way mono or stereo crossover, where I can independently set the filter types. You can see it in here, Butterworth or uh, Linkwitz Riley, di different slopes. I can set graphic EQ or PQ per output of the crossover my delay times, limiters, and levels. So this adds to the configurability of the unit. Then I can see my local patch for the outputs of uh, these crossover filters. Now the patch can also be controlled by the overview screen, which is the next thing I want to show you. So this is my patch of zone outputs to my local Phoenix connectors on the back, but I can also patch to uh, all of my 128 um, uh, IO port channels or the S-Link port. I can zoom in and out of this grid very easily with my, with my mouse. Um, I can also use the overview uh, screen to check my cross points. So this is the internal routing of which inputs are going to which zones. Microphone one is on 
zone meeting, zone number one meeting. Now I can obviously click on the cross point to change the assignment, but I can also click this option to show the fader and mute values. So that instead of the simple cross point indication, I also have an idea of the send level of a channel to a zone. And I also have an idea of the mute status. And in this view, I can also right click on any cross point to very quickly toggle to zero dB or minus infinity or toggle the mute status, which is very handy. And finally, in this uh, view, you can also go and uh, route something from zone to zone. And this is very powerful. So zone to zone means essentially you can do things like room combining or also manage overflow situations where you want to send the mix from a main hall to uh, a number of other meeting rooms in the same conference center. So once again, uh, a very configurable uh, set of options. Now also down here, there's an option to open a new window, which particularly with the overview screen is very useful because what you can do is you can keep uh, setting your routing and patch on one screen while on the other, you have, for example, your channel processing. Uh, particularly if you have multiple screens in your system, uh, that can be very handy indeed. Okay, now I'll switch to back to the channels view just to mention the control groups. You have 32 available. The control groups essentially are a quick way of assigning multiple channels to a single fader for level control. Now, these can be input channels, they can be output zones. They can also be cross points. So you can have a control group controlling cross point send levels and mutes of a, a group of channels to a group of outputs. Okay, now onto my manage uh, menu. And here we have our preset configuration. So you can see I have a bunch of presets already configured in here. I can have as many as 500 in a single configuration file. I can set up a startup preset if I wish to do so, which will be recalled every time uh, the unit is powered up. For every preset, I can go into my recalled items. This is a recall scope. So for those of you familiar with our live mixes like DLive and Avantis, this is exactly the reverse logic. So in this case, a preset is empty by default when we recall it we have to go and specify what we want that preset to recall. And it's very granular. So I can have a preset that only changes the PQ on one zone only, or only changes the IP1 controller settings for a specific rooms. Also in this page, you'll see that we can send custom MIDI strings and in future custom TCP IP strings to external devices when we recall a preset. Track playback, so we can start the playback of a file when we recall a preset. There's also the embedded recall, which is a very powerful tool for recalling any other preset in this unit after a delay, perhaps, or on any other networked unit. Not only AHM64, this, only, this also works with Avantis and DLive mixes. So imagine a classic uh, multi-purpose venue uh, where you have uh, a live mixer for the uh, Saturday night performances, but you also have an AHM64. Not only you can connect the two audio-wise with the S-Link port very easily, but you can also sync some of the presets. So that, for example, when you recall preset number one on the AHM64, a specific scene will be triggered in the DLive or Avantis system. Okay, also in the manage uh, menu, we have our event scheduler and crossfades. The crossfades are very granular. You can choose uh, crossfade time for inputs and zones and groups, and you can apply the crossfades to individual uh, channels or cross points. The event scheduler, we have 50 events available. Each one of these can be set, for example, to repeat, in this case, at 23, uh, at the 23 hour, uh, every day, uh, and this one will um, recall preset one, uh, which is a complete reset of the unit. Uh, this other example, uh, I think it's every Tuesday uh, at, at the at 6 p.m., 
it will start the playback of a track. So this could be your happy hour uh, jingle or anything you like. And finally, as I mentioned, the, the playback system, uh, I can upload tracks directly to the internal memory, about three gigabytes available. And I can then select a track and start it very simply. And obviously I can patch the playback to any input channels uh, of the 64 I have available in my system. Now, configuration. This is where I set my configuration for the unit, including uh, the stereo configuration for the channels, the stereo configuration for the zone outputs. And also here is where you choose how many zones you actually want to use in this particular design and how many will be then left available for crossover outputs uh, for your zones. So you can see in this other page, I can see that zone number five has got a two-way crossover, uh, zone 11, 12, which is a stereo zones, a stereo zone has a three-way crossover uh, available. You also have up to eight signal generators. Each one can have independent um, noise type and gain and frequency and can be patched to channels or zones. Uh, sync options, metering options. This is your network, uh, so IP name and uh, IP configuration, IP address, unit time, and importantly, these two items on the bottom, these are to save your entire configuration into a single file and save it onto your local hard disk or backup anywhere, and then restore a configuration later on onto a unit. I can also use the configure uh, menu to configure all of my controllers. So GPIO, IP1 wall plates, IP6, IP8, I can have up to 64 IP1 devices. These are our single uh, rotary control um, wall, uh, wall plate uh, and configure them this way. Uh, and again, we can configure options for the IO port, like the internal network bridge for the Dante card. I can set on my user profiles, so I can have up to 32 available, uh, each one with a user and password if I like. And each of these can be assigned to a specific custom control interface so that when I log in with an iPad or, or an Android tablet or whatever, uh, I will be presented with a specific interface tailored to my needs. Uh, and finally, this tab is called MIDI. It will be renamed to TCP control in future. This is essentially where I can control some of the security options for the third party control of my unit, including uploading an SSL certificate. And then connection, uh, the connection menu where I can see the logs for the unit, download them, send them to support if I have to. Uh, and obviously I can disconnect from this unit now. And we're disconnected. And you can see I have an option to run the system offline. That's to program a configuration without a physical unit connected. Okay, back to our presentation. Because now what I'd like to do is to talk a little bit about the ecosystem around the AHM64 and all of the options that are available right now from the start uh, to you for building a system. So I'll, I'll focus first on the right side of the screen, which is all of the audio expansion options. So with our Everything I.O. ecosystem of expansion options, uh, essentially with an AHM system, you can have uh, several or many discrete I.O. locations, up to 25 counting the main unit. You can deploy audio wherever needed in a building. You can choose from a family of portable, rack mountable, wall mount expanders. And importantly, you can choose what sort of um, audio networking protocol you want to use, whether you want to stay with our proprietary layer two plug and play uh, 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 transport protocols, or whether you want to uh, uh, use Dante audio over IP layer three protocols. And we'll discuss a little bit the use case for uh, each in a minute. So this gives you access to hundreds of system inputs and outputs that you can freely patch into out even without going through the processing matrix. So you have a big uh, system matrix on top of your processing 64 by 64 uh, matrix inside. Uh, which makes AHM64 very scalable indeed. So you can use it for uh, any application like single rooms up to uh, university campus or distributed spaces, 
All of the connections are ethernet based, meaning you can convert to fiber optic if you wish to do so. And you can see in this slide, for example, we uh, have the example of our DX hub. So you can have a single trunk connection to the main unit, go up to the next floor or the next building, and then branch out to multiple uh, DX expanders. Now let's have a look at all of the expanders available, starting with the 48 kilohertz ARAB racks, which we uh, designed originally for our GLV and Q range of uh, digital mixers. Uh, all of these, the 2412, 84, 16, 8, are available and compatible uh, with AHM64 straight from the S-Link port. You can have two of these daisy chains, so you can have a 2412 and then maybe a portable AB16-8 on the same line. Also available is the DX16-8, which is the newer 96 kilohertz version of the, of the 16 -8. Again, this can connect straight to the S-Link port or through a DX hub, and you can have a couple of these um, daisy chained. This is also available in Dante flavor. So this is called the DT16-8. Same preamps, same converters, but this runs on Dante. Two ports for redundant or switched mode, and you can uh, add up to 16 of these Dante units to an H AHM system. The DX164W, which is a wall mount expander with 16 input and four outputs, again, connects to the S-Link. And once again, this is available in Dante flavor um, too. Uh, so you can have a wall mount 16 by four Dante um, stage box. Now the DX164W and DT164W have some very interesting features for installers and integrators. Uh, obviously they can mount in a wall with a mounting frame or they can mount on top of a wall. So um, sticking out of the wall with the same frame reverse mounted. They can be mounted in a floor pocket or dip trap. And in fact, the, this mechanical design is compatible with an ACE backstage accessory. This is a, an American company specializing in stage pocket systems and equipment. Uh, mechanically, it would also fit into our uh, NEMA box 11 by 11 inches, but it would need a custom frame for supporting. And there's three power options. So there's the mains IC. You can remove that block and fit a gland connector with screw terminals inside, uh, which means that you can certify the uh, stage box as part of the electrical system even before you start commissioning the audio. Or you can power it with a 12 volts uh, DC input. Uh, and that's if you have already 12 volts distribution in the wall, for example, for control panels, you can take advantage of that. Both the DT16-8 and DT16-4W are AS67 compatible and Dante Domain Manager ready. Now, we get a lot of questions about when would I use the DT, so the Dante version of your stage boxes, or where would I just use the DX version of your stage boxes? Now, the DX version is plug and play. There's no network re uh, setup required, no Dante controller required, or setting up, setting up clock settings. It also offers uh, a very useful feature, which is automatic firmware matching, which I will explain later. But essentially, when you connect it to the main unit, the firmware will be matched automatically to the main unit. And also the patching and the settings stay with the AHM processor. So that allows for a very easy drop-in replacement. If I have a faulty unit, I'll, I'll drop in a new one and it will just get the, the settings for the preamp gain and uh, my patching and everything from the main unit. On the other side, the Dante options obviously are easier to integrate with other Dante equipment, so for networking. They're fully networkable, meaning it's layer three, it's, um, uh, it can run alongside other traffic on an ethernet switch. You can connect in many different topologies. Uh, the user can control the network from any point in the system, in the building. Uh, so th there are advantages to, um, uh, to each, essentially, and it really depends on the application. Okay, other expanders that we have available, this one is the DXO12. Again, it can connect straight to the S-Link or through a DX hub. It can be daisy-chained to any other DX expander. This gives you 12 XLR outputs, which can be configured as uh, 12 analog or 8 analog for digital stereo AS 
sample for analog eight digital stereo AES with global switchable sample rate. We also have a modular expander, the DX32, with four card slots, four cards of eight channels each, analog or digital AES in any combination. And the GX4816, which is primarily designed for our live mixers, the SQ and the Avantis range, but essentially can also be a very central IO point for your AHM matrix, perhaps in a control room. And it also gives you a couple of DX ports on the bottom right for further expansion to DX expanders, so up to two expanders for each port. And as I said, we have a DX hub available. So this will give you a single cable connection to the AHM uh, unit on the right, the GIGAS port, which connects straight to the S-Link port on the AHM64, and then four DX ports for DX expander connection, up to two expanders per port, so eight expanders on a single hub. Right, back to our system map. And now we will focus a little bit on the left side of the screen, so the, the world of control and integration. How can we control AHM64? To start with, we have a TCPIP control protocol. Anyone can download it and essentially use it to program a custom control system, whether it's Crestron or, or anything else. But we're also working with some developers to provide Extron, AMX, Crestron, possibly Kramer, control drivers and modules that you can download for free and you can use as a starting point or as a template for your project. Now let's have a look at something uh, more we can offer. I'll start with a GPIO interface. So as I said, there's a two by two GPIO on the main unit, but if you need more, uh, you can fit up to eight of these GPIO interfaces around your ethernet system, uh, around your control network. Uh, so they are PoE powered, and TCP IP compatible, so it's standard TCP data, uh, meaning you can use the same control network that you use for other things in your installation. And the beauty of it is that they can sit anywhere you like. So instead of running a very long analog cable for a contact closure in the alarm room on the other side of the building in a security um, build, uh, room, uh, you, can, you can run a CAT5 cable instead on ethernet and then have uh, the contact closure nearby uh, very close to the interface. So each one gives you eight normally open uh, relay outputs. One of them can be configured as a normally closed for alarm applications and eight opto-isolated inputs. Next one are IP controllers. So again, these are PoE powered and TCP IP, so they can run on any control network. Uh, the IP1 is a wall plate device, single gang, uh, we have it in two options, the US standard, which uh, fits standard Decora plates, or the European or UK uh, standard, which is a Euroblock uh, module. Uh, and again, they come in black or white. Single dual function rotary control, so you can use it to control a level and maybe push to control um, source selection or preset selection for the room, and a single LCD display. Then we have the IP6 with six rotaries and a bunch of programmable soft keys and LCD displays. Some of these soft keys like the bottom row, for example, typically would be assigned to layer changes so you can access more than six channels or zone output levels at a time. And the same applies to the IP8, which gives you eight motorized faders and programmable soft keys uh, and possibly six different layers. So you could control up to 48 channels or um, zone output levels or a combination of those. And this is PoE plus uh, because of the motorized faders. And finally, custom control, which is our own customizable app to offer tailored user interfaces for multiple users and device types. What does that mean? It means that not only you can create up to 32 user profiles in your AHM64, each one with a custom user interface when they log in. But you can also specify which interface you want to deploy on which device type. For example, the same user 
might have a very simplified interface on their iPhone, but when they log into the same system and same username with an iPad or a tablet or, or uh, a laptop, they might have uh, um, a more comprehensive set of controls. So our custom control is quite unique because the configuration file lives in the AHM64 matrix. It doesn't, you don't need to um, download or to uh, load a configuration or an interface file onto the mobile devices. So it makes it very suitable, not only for kiosk applications, uh, but also for bring your own device environments. Essentially anyone with the access to the network and the right login name and password can go into the system and the interface will be deployed instantly on demand to that device. Now I have some application examples here. Uh, I will not go uh, into a lot of detail with, uh, with each of these. They are available on our website. So if you want to have a look at how AHM could uh, address different applications or scenarios, you can go on our website and take a look. And of course, if you want to know how it might fit your specific requirements and projects, please get in touch with us directly or with our uh, distribution partners in your, in your country. And we'd be more than happy to, uh, to help. Uh, so have a conference example here and a retail system. So a very simple system with a paging microphone, a custom control interface, a couple of IP1 wall plates to control the uh, level or source selection in a, in a couple of zones. A house of worship example, a restaurant or bar, again with multiple zones, and maybe uh, a corner where I have a DX16.4 to allow multiple microphones and sources to be connected very easily. Uh, and again, a leisure center. So, hopefully you've learned something about AHM64 today. I'm confident it can become your next go-to processor. Why do I say so? Uh, that's because of the full ecosystem of I.O. and control, because of the scalable and, and easy system building, and also because of what, what it gives you for the prize. So let's have a look at that a bit more in, in detail. Uh, AHM64 can save you time and money. To start with, with the uh, off-the-shelf uh, ecosystem and set of accessories and control expansion options, you don't, you don't need to waste time sourcing and configuring third-party gear. You can catch your after-sales call-outs and costs with automatic firmware matching. So, as I said earlier, updates to the AHM64 unit are reflected automatically to all connected IP remote controllers and audio expanders. So you don't have to run around the building to um, uh, update all of your uh, accessories and peripherals. There's no hidden costs. So we don't charge for apps. We don't charge for uh, extra modules, um, software modules, and we don't slap on extra service fees either to our uh, product. Uh, and there's no compromises. So the, the, the powerful architecture lets you apply any and all of the processing to every one of the 64 by 64 inputs and outputs if you if you wish to do so so you never run out of processing and you don't waste time juggling resources i think all of you working with open architecture platforms probably at some point have been in the situation of compromising on what you can actually fit into the compiler before you compile your system and uh, and then watch uh, out for the dreadful latency at the other side of the compiler uh, it's also very easy to learn. So the, the system manager uh, makes creating audio systems very, very easy with no, no uh, third party programming or certified training uh, required. Uh, so it can be a go to solution. It's tremendously scalable. Uh, so if you invest a little time in AHM, uh, I think it might become your foundation for everything from, from bars to, uh, to banks. Very good, and it's time for questions. I've seen lots of questions coming in uh, during the webinar, so I'll try and pick up some of these. Uh, so Jerry, hi Jerry. Uh, Jerry's asking if there will be a Dante 128 by 128 card. Uh, that's not planned right now, Jerry, not for this product, uh, but as with anything else, we are very much listening to uh, people's requirements and requests, and we will monitor the demand for more IO options 
Um, is the webinar recorded for rewatch? Yes, it will be. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm recording the webinar and it will be uploaded to our webinar um, channel very soon. Um, someone is asking for the RRP. Uh, I would say speak to your local Alan Heath distributor or dealer. Uh, so the HM64 will not be, will not have any advertised price online. Uh, so please talk to your uh, suppliers to get a, a price for the unit. Does it have an all pass filter? No, but again, I've, I've, uh, I've heard this before. So at the moment you have all of your PQ and GQ options and crossover filters. There's no all pass. Uh, that if there's a specific need for all pass, uh, we can definitely look into it for a future update. Um, Let's have a look. Can I use AHM connected to DLive to call presets on DLive? Yes, as I, as I said, essentially you can connect it to AudioWise through the S-Link port, and you can also, provided they are on the same control network, you can trigger presets from one to the other and, and vice versa. Can you record on AHM64? Uh, no, not at the moment. Uh, the technology is there, so it might be that they will become available in a future update, again, depending on demand and development time. Um, but at the moment, you can only play back files and not record uh, files or messages. Uh, so there's a question about the echo cancelling module and um, what sort of options uh, we're looking into. Uh, okay, so the echo cancelling, uh, there's a couple of other questions on it. So in terms of specs, uh, it's a bit too early to confirm the specs, but we're working towards uh, 16 channels of echo cancelling minimum with the extra module. In terms of other applications for that uh, slot on the top panel, uh, yes, there are other uh, ideas. And uh, when I started presenting the AHM64 in a series of um, meetings around the, the globe, essentially, uh, a team for COM last year, then uh, uh, integrate in Australia and so on. People have asked for other applications for extra processing power, things like delay matrix or things like um, um, immersive sound uh, management. Uh, so again, do, do not expect any of these in the short term, but essentially we will uh, have a look at what other options we can offer for that, uh, for that module. Um, Roger is asking, can you repeat how many user profiles are available? There's 32 user profiles available, each one with a user and password. When will the software be available? Okay, so as I said, it's still in uh, very much in beta, even at alpha stage at this, at this moment in time. Uh, we're starting beta testing in the next few weeks. Uh, we'd like to have it available for a V1 release, uh, I would say some point in May uh, this year. Uh, and at the same time, we should be able to start shipping some of the units. So the two things should align in time um, with the units going out of the factory and the software being available. Uh, is the number of IP8 that can be connected the same as IP1? Uh, no, so with IP1, the single wall plate, you can have up to 64 of them. With the IP8 and IP6, you can have up to 16 of each type in an AHM64 system. Uh, Andrew is asking whether the AHM can be controlled by a DLive, Avantis or SQ console. I would say no, so it's a separate mixer, it's a separate engine. Uh, so what you can do, as I said in the webinar, you can exchange audio, you can exchange control data so that you can trigger presets on one or the other but certainly you cannot control the engine and the processing from uh, one of our live mixes. Uh, there's a question on why Dante and Control are shown on different network layouts on my application examples. Why can they not run on the same network? Absolutely, they can run on the same network. So there's no strict requirement to keep them separate. I've seen from experience that a lot of installers and system integrators still prefer to run separate uh, networks or at least separate VLANs for the control and the audio side. You don't have to do that. Uh, obviously, if you, if you guys have got your um, Ordinate Dante certification level two, three, you probably know that you can easily manage Dante network alongside other traffic, even without the use of, of VLAN. 
Uh, someone is asking whether our distribution knows the pricing for EHM64. Yes, they have uh, all of the information to give you a quote and to give you pricing and availability information. So please reach out to them again if you have done already. Um, full amount of inputs and outputs in uh, total to handle. Uh, that's a question from Patrick. Uh, so the, the processing matrix is, six, is 64 by 64. But with the IO port and S-Link, you can have hundreds of system inputs and outputs that you can patch at any one time. Uh, someone is asking if we can send a presentation out. Uh, there is a version of this presentation uh, on our website under the sales and marketing resources. I will make a public one available um, so that you can review the information. And as I said, the recording of the webinar will also be available. Uh, good question here from Gins. Uh, is the processor certified to the EN54 safety standard? Uh, no, it isn't. Um, we looked into, into that and unfortunately for us, um, it's not worthwhile in terms of the investment uh, to, uh, to meet that safety standard and to do all the certification process. Now, that being said, even though the unit is not EN54 certified, uh, if you look at the regulation, you can use this unit in a voice uh, equation system or alarm system, provided the system is EN54 compliant. Uh, so, for example, the fact that we can offer redundant power su uh, supply with a DC input uh, might well mean that the unit can be can suit a, a, an EN54 system, but it will be your responsibility to certify the system. Uh, let's have a look. Can you talk a bit more about the out output system processing? Uh, can you combine several outputs worth of PQ into one three-way crossover? So, uh, okay. So with the with the outputs, you have sixty-four processing outputs available. Of these, you can say I want all of them as zone outputs, as mixes essentially, and how many are mono, stereo in, in any combination, up to sixty-four in total. Or you can say, actually, I only need uh, 32 zones or 56 zones, which means that you have some spare processing output channels. And these can be used for crossovering. Uh, so essentially, from a single zone, you can go into up to a four-way stereo crossover. And each crossover line will have independent uh, PQ level, a delay, limiter, and so on. Uh, there's a question from Brian on whether we are planning FIR filters. I would say no. Um, the Again, the crossover side of AHM64 is designed to uh, suit most needs in an installation. It will not replace dedicated uh, speaker processor units for line array systems from the likes of uh, Labgruppen or, or similar. Uh, so uh, absolutely, you can have very simple crossovers for your ceiling speakers and subwoofers and so on. Uh, but I don't think we'll introduce FIR coefficients or anything like that. Uh, is there a limitation on the number of simultaneous tracks played back? Uh, so at the moment, you have uh, a, a single stereo engine. You can play back uh, up to three tracks at the same time, but you have only a stereo or dual uh, mono, so a split output. We're looking at increasing that uh, count so that you can have two or maybe three uh, independent players uh, at the same time. Uh, again, can we use a DLive Surface S3000 um, for studio controls for this unit? Uh, not really. So if you have a DLive Surface, you will need a DLive mix rack as the engine. But you can exchange audio and some control between DLive and AHM64. When will, be, when will the feedback reduction module be available? Uh, so with feedback reduction, we are looking at two possible options. One is to use the power of the echo cancelling module to do very sophisticated feedback reduction. So that will uh, become available uh, at some point in the summer this year. Um, there might be also a simplified feedback uh, controller uh, that can fit into the PQ of the of the channels. So we're looking at that option as well. Can you confirm if the output crossover has individual band limiters? Yes, it does. Uh, each one with its own settings of threshold and uh, and, and uh, time ballistics. 
Uh, can I use uh, the processor ambient noise controller? Uh, I think it's a question on uh, what the noise controller does, what the noise compensation does. So that's typically used in noisy environments where you want uh, to have a measurement microphone picking up the level of noise and you want the gain to the uh, mix for that zone to be compensating for the level of noise. So if there's a lot of noise, a lot of people talking or walking through, the gain will be automatically compensating for that. Uh, can I link multiple EHM 64s together? Um, you can to a certain point. So again, you can link them, uh, for example, with the S-Link port to send uh, audio many channels of audio from one to the other. You can put them on the same control network so you can sync presets between them. But it doesn't all of a sudden become a, a larger matrix. So it's still two 64 by 64 matrices uh, with a dialogue in between, if that makes sense. Uh, someone is asking, uh, well, suggesting really, they would be very handy to have a paging station. Watch the space. Again, we obviously I presented the uh, line of existing accessories, uh, but we're also thinking uh, about what we can bring to the market in the future at the same time. Um, there's a question on logins and credentials. Let's have a look. Uh, another question on recalling presets on live mixers. Uh, so I mentioned D11 Avantis. Can you recall presets on SQ? No, unfortunately. SQ and Q use a fundamentally different control uh, mechanism and language. So you will not be able to recall a preset um, or a scene on the SQ. Uh, would the input or output channel count appear as patchable points on a D level or SQ? No, once again, they are separate systems. You can share audio, you can sync presets, but you cannot control uh, AHM64 inputs or outputs from um, a DLive or SQ. Uh, can you focus a bit more on the FPGA processing? Okay, so um, obviously it's beyond the scope of this webinar to explain exactly what the FPGA does, but we started using FPGA with our DLive mixing consoles and then with the SQ and the Avantis, switching over from DSP technology. So with DSP, we used what we call a DSP farm. So a set of multiple DSP chips, each one typically processing up to, I don't know, eight channels of audio. Um, and we, we quickly realized when we were designing the DLive that to get to the channel count and sample rate and processing power we wanted, uh, it meant that we had to multiply that number of chips by two for the sample rate, and then twice again for the input channel count, and then twice again for the bus count. Uh, and it, was, it wasn't really a feasible option. So we, we had to look for another solution. Uh, we spent years of man research into FPGA, and we came up with a solution that essentially uses a single FPGA chip, which is the size of a stamp really, but incredibly powerful. So it runs many virtual DSP cores inside the single chip. Um, it's, for example, 36 for the processing, channel processing on DLive and AHM. All of these virtual DSP cores appear to the DSP engineer as actual uh, DSP platforms, so they can use high-level DSP language instead of very low-level uh, FPGA coding. And we have a sort of compiler in between that can build the FPGA uh, code for the, for the chip. Uh, so some of the advantages are incredibly low latency, sub-millisecond system latency, uh, phase coherency of all of the outputs, so that you don't have to uh, send audio from one DSP chip to another. So everything is coherent in phase on the, on the outputs. Uh, and then there's more, but again, um, that's probably beyond the scope of today's webinar. Uh, any plans for an AHM 16? Very good question. Uh, again, uh, this is just a start. So we uh, hopefully AHM 64 shows everyone that we're quite serious about getting back into the uh, dedicated installation market, uh, and there might be more to come in future. Uh, let's see, I think I answered most of the questions. There's more coming in. Uh, can I set a schedule common, for example, a daily playlist? With the event scheduler, you can, you can schedule a, a single track, not a playlist. Um, that being said, obviously, you could have um, uh, an event which triggers either a MIDI command or something, 
that starts the playback of a playlist from an external device. So you have, if you have an external playback uh, system, that's very much possible. Uh, does it work for calling some controls like camera presets? Uh, GPIO is your friend there. You can have GPIO interfaces which uh, either close um, uh, to trigger a camera preset whenever a channel is in use, so sensing uh, the, the level of a channel um, or anything like that. Uh, is there an internal signal generator? Um, actually, there's eight signal generators available inside the unit. Uh, each one with its own settings and each one can be patched to um, a number of inputs or outputs. Any plan for uh, voice over IP options and telephony? Not at the moment, but again, we will constantly review the requests and the demand for accessories and peripherals and, and see what makes sense in terms of uh, for, for the market demand. Will there be an RTA available? There is one already. So there's a standard 30 band RTA available on your monitoring outputs. Um, for third party control, do the Crestron driver will be available at, on the release of AHM? Ideally, yes, we are working with developers right now. So um, I, I like to think that the, the drivers will be available. If not, obviously the TCP IP control protocol will be available. So you can definitely start with that one uh, and program whatever you like uh, with that document as a reference. Uh, but the drivers will be available hopefully very, very shortly afterwards. Uh, can you cascade units for redundancy? No, that's not something that is possible, certainly not now. Uh, again, you can have uh, audio share, sharing between two systems. Uh, for example, with Dante stage boxes, you can send the same audio to two AHM64 units. If you uh, make provision for it in terms of having the same presets on one and the other, then you can add some level of redundancy, as in you can sync the presets between the two. If one fails, you can switch to uh, using the other one, but not uh, not automatically, as, a, as it were. Um, is there a log file available? Uh, yes, so the, there's internal logs to the system, including uh, any event that is happening, any error, and you can download the log file and you can also send it to tech support at Allen Heath for investigation. Does it have effects built in? No, there's no effects in AHM64. So again, a few people have asked me, can I use it as a little bit of, a, as, as a live mixer as well as, a, uh, as an installation matrix? Uh, to a certain point, yes, the audio quality is the same audio quality that you would find on any of our live mixers. However, it doesn't have built in effects like reverbs and delays, which rules out uh, obviously some, some live applications. Um, it's compatible with IP1, IP6, IP8 remote controllers. What about IPv4? Uh, IPv4 is a, a standard of IP networking and of course we are compatible with it. Uh, if the question is whether we are planning an IP4 remote controller, um, again, uh, we will always look at how we can expand the range of options and, and find uh, new accessories for the, for the line. Uh, say something about the use of the matrix as a sample rate converter. Interesting question. So, uh, yes, the, the, the processing inside will always be 96 kilohertz, but both the S-Link and the I-O port can operate at either 48 kilohertz or 96 kilohertz. So, for example, you can uh, get 48 kilohertz Dante audio on one side and send it out to AES digital outputs at any sample rate you like on the AES uh, or to... Um, uh, to the S-Link, again, the S-Link can operate at 40K or 96K, depending on what sort of expander you connect to it. Are the inputs and outputs face coherent like a D-Live console? Yes, absolutely, they are. Uh, okay, so again, uh, would it be suitable for a theatrical installation running show relay and backstage paging alongside front of house, bar music and announcement? Yeah, that, that would be a great application for it. And again, as I said, you could have a live console managing the actual live show for the theater, interfacing with the AHM64 for distribution around the building and uh, again, more service uh, use. All right, so we're coming up to the hour and I think I answered most questions, but I will review the questions offline and we'll get back to uh, each and every of you individually if, you, if I haven't answered already um, your question now. 
thank you again for uh, watching the webinar. Uh, it's a very strong participation uh, today. Uh, and uh, you will find the recording on our, our webinar channel uh, very shortly. Uh, so thank you again and goodbye.